Navigational warnings provide early information of important incidents which may constitute a danger to navigation. Many navigational warnings are of a temporary nature, but others remain in force for several weeks and may be followed chart and publication corrections in the weekly notices to mariners. Care should be taken while taking nav warnings from the Internet. No data should be obtained from unofficial websites. Information about official websites can be received from LRS Volume 5 under the section of Maritime Safety Information. A good navigator plans each voyage carefully. When navigational warnings are received on any matter relating to the safety of life at sea, the responsible navigator should immediately check if they will affect the intended voyage. If that be so, these warnings should be plotted in the appropriate electronic or paper chart. Navigational warning are described as new, in force or cancelled, depending on what outstanding actions you have. Navigational warnings are broadcast for a variety of occurrences including damage and changes to important buoys and lights or lightships, changes in depth of water, dangerous wrecks or obstruction to navigation, floating dangers like containers, drifting buoys, large logs of wood, newly established aids to navigation, military or fire exercise areas, underwater activities in certain areas, vessels aground in the approaches to ports and strong wind warnings. The first stage of oil and gas exploration is usually a survey. Seismic surveys are conducted in connection with the exploration for oil and gas. A seismic survey vessel may tow multiple, around three, between three cables and three miles in length and up to 300 meters apart. The end is marked with a buoy with a radar reflector. A second vessel may follow the seismic survey vessel to keep the way clear. Seismic vessels usually acquire their data by running parallel courses over a rectangular grid. An example of a seismic surveying navigation warning follows, Trinidad Southeast Coast Chart BA 1045. Masters of vessels are hereby notified that the MV Fugros Equator will be conducting survey activities within the East Coast Marine Area blocks at the following position, Lobster West 10 degrees 07.22 minutes north 060 degrees 03.97 minutes west. Lobster Main 10 degrees 07.9 minutes north 060 degrees 02.9 minutes west. ICE 10 degrees 14.39 minutes north 060 degrees 07.95 minutes west. Grenadier 10 degrees 13.73 minutes north 060 degree 13.77 minutes west. The activities will commence on or about April 1, 2020 for a period of approximately 55, 55, days thereafter. A wide berth and extreme caution is advised. Datum WGS 84 March 27, 2020 The development of an offshore field involves the frequent moving of large structures and buoys and the laying of many miles of pipeline. These are weather-dependent activities. Mobile rigs are used to drill wells to explore and develop a field. Jack-up rigs are towed into position where their steel legs are lowered to the seabed and the drilling platform is then jacked up clear of the water. They are used in depths down to about 120 meters. Navigational Warning 01320 Chart BA 483 Trinidad Gulf of Peria Masters of vessels are hereby notified that the semi-submersible drilling rig development driller 3 will be arriving in Trinidad and Tobago via wet tow by the anchor handling vessel Alp Sweeper along the north coast on Saturday March 21, 2020. The rig will subsequently be anchored in Chaguarmas at position, latitude 10 degrees 38.1 minutes north, longitude 061 degree 43.1 minutes west, for a period of approximately 30, 30, days thereafter. A wide berth and caution is advised. The length of the tow wire should also be proportional with the towing area of operation. Generally no tow wire should be less than 800 meters for an ocean tow, some advise 1000 meters and the tow wire should never be less than 500 meters for a benign towing area. An emergency towing line should be strapped along the side of the hull just below top deck level in a manner permitting quick release. 
Mi toe line should be of a size suitable for the toe intended accounting for the bollard pull of the toe vessels, including shock loads. A polypropylene shock line, the size and length suitable for the bollard pull of the toe vessels being used, should be attached to the emergency toe line with suitable connectors. For tugs operating in benign areas, a single toe wire may be acceptable.